As we know, by the many quotes documented from the Roman Catholic popes and prelates, the Pope and his cohorts have been saying for centuries that the Bible is not a trustworthy book, and it is not one that should be considered as such by any Christians. Well, here's just a few of these quotes. But the first is a quote that is directed to the prelates of Rome by Christopher Wordsworth back in 1848, which says, Your Romish doctors strain every nerve to persuade us that Scripture is imperfect. And so they knew what was going on even back then. And then in 1893, Pope Leo XIII stated that it is true, no doubt, that copyists have made mistakes in the text of the Bible. This question, when it arises, should be carefully considered on its merits, and the fact not too easily admitted, but only in those passages where the proof is clear. Now, he doesn't offer any passages, just like Francis did recently, where he said certain parts of the Bible aren't trustworthy, but then never showed anybody what verses he was talking about, and neither did this pope or any pope. They just say that stuff and expect the people to believe them. But still, keep in mind that the errors in grammar and punctuation are noted in the King James Bible, but we all know that such things were added to the Bible quite some time after it was translated. But when it comes to doctrine and biblical jurisprudence, no, there are no such errors found in the Bible. Only the unbeliever that looks into the Bible with an unbelieving eye will find error or contradiction because he or she has not the ability to recall or even discover wherein the word is backed up line upon line and precept upon precept. In fact, it says in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that the natural man, or the non-believer, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And so unless the critic of the Bible finds Christ as Lord, who then grants him the eyes needed to see the truth wherein he thought error existed, such a soul is not capable to see the truth at all. And so when confronted with such people, pray for them, because arguing cannot force them to see what they are literally blind to see. But to share one more quote from Rome, and I shared this quote in a newsletter I did back in September of 1999, It states that the Vatican criticized a literal interpretation of the Bible and said the fundamentalist approach to Scripture was a kind of intellectual suicide. A Vatican document said, Fundamentalism refuses to admit that the inspired Word of God has been expressed in human language by human authors possessed of limited capacities and resources. The fundamentalist approach is dangerous, for it is attractive to people who look to the Bible for ready answers to the problems of life. I couldn't even believe they said that. (laughs) But it goes on to say that a fundamentalist interpretation of the Bible began during the Reformation, when Protestants showed an increasing concern for fidelity to the literal meaning of Scripture. And they're saying that as if that's a bad thing, just like what they said a minute ago about people looking for answers to the problems of life in the scriptures, which true Christians know you can find in there. All the answers are there. And then going on, it says one member of the commission, Jesuit priest, Joseph Fitzmaier said, fundamentalists failed to recognize that several years elapsed between the time Jesus spoke and the time when the gospels were written. There was no stenographer, no one with a tape recorder at that time. And so again, the Bible is declared imperfect by Rome. But worse yet, even though they all know the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh and dwelt among us in John 1.14, as well as 2 Peter 1.21, which says that the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. To declare the Bible imperfect or fallible is also declaring the God of the Bible is imperfect in how he sends the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And Jesus said that in John 14, 26. They know that verse is in there. But when they make these claims, they're saying Jesus lied. He's not going to bring things to your remembrance, is what they're saying. And so that's what Rome and all those in bed with her are doing when they declare the Bible is imperfect by using the excuse like this Jesuit did in regarding there not being a stenographer or even a tape recorder nearby when Jesus was walking among us. And so that means 
their lack of faith actually cultivates doubt in the Word of God, and especially the promises found in it, and especially the promise of John 14, 26 that I shared that proves there was no need for a stenographer or a tape recorder when a mighty God brings things to your remembrance. And so I praise God that his prophesied reformation allowed for the common man to finally get his hands on the Bible that Rome chained to the pulpits and even burned people alive for reading it. They, of course, killed those Christians because the truth they discovered in the Holy Spirit inspired Word of God exposed the Vatican as the Antichrist it is. And so this is why they did all they could to kill those that trusted it, as well as why they repeated their hateful claims towards the Bible back in 1999. And to this day, many other churches in bed with Rome followed suit so as to keep the people trusting their pastors over and above the Lord Jesus of the Bible because they knew if the people trusted the Word of God as being infallible, it would mean once read, and as the world saw during the Reformation, the people would finally discover again that the truth is there, and they would leave the apostate churches. And so, as most Christians have known of Rome's hatred of the Bible for centuries, has their hatred entered into all the churches claiming to be Protestant? Well, just opening up the rewritten Bibles like the NIV or the NESB confirms, yeah, they do hate the Word of God because there's thousands of verses missing in those Bibles, and even thousands more rewritten to hide the truth about Rome and their false dogma. But is it possible that the Seventh-day Adventist Church would say the same about the precious Word of our God in writing? Would they go so far as to say that? Well, check this out, and this is from General Conference President Neil C. Wilson back in 1981. He said, In our study and presentation of the Bible, we also must reject the idea of biblical inerrancy and verbal inspiration, but we dare not treat the scriptures as just another human document. He puts that last statement in there just to cover his tracks to make it look like he's still back in the Bible, when in fact he just said the Bible's fallible. It's not perfect. And so once again, we see the Seventh-day Adventist Church is in fact in agreement with the man of sin in Rome, but this time by declaring the Bible is imperfect. And just so you know, the word inerrancy is synonymous with the word infallibility. Thank you for watching. God bless. 